This is Ajay for Tech Primers. In this session, we are going to see the different 12 factor app principles. Adam McGinn, who was a co founder of Heroku, which is a platform as a service offering which is similar to the Cloud Foundry, founded these 12 factor application principles when he designed applications deploying to Heroku. So let's go through them one by one. So the first one is the code base. So what he defines as a code base is let's say you have a deployment. Um, every deployment should have a separate repository. So let's say you have like five different processes or five different deployments Then basically you will have to have five different repositories. So he wants to split everything into a separate repository so that you can uh, deploy as a whole. So you would either deploy as a whole or you don't deploy at all. So that is what the code base principle mean. The next one is the dependencies. So managing the dependencies in the application uh, should be um, brought in from the application. So it shouldn't be like um, coming inside the application so it should be uh, hosted in a repository layer so something like a maven repo or something similar to that so that is what dependencies mean config so config should be out of the uh, repository so externalizing the configurations out of the repository would basically mean that your code is separate and the configs are separate so you don't have to um, redeploy or repackage your application when you have to change something in the config so that is what this config means. Backing services. So let's say we want to connect to different um, services to connect to the application. For example, database services. So these database uh, data sources can be injected as separate backing services rather than having these configured inside the application. So that is what the backing services mean. The next one would be the build, release and run. Uh, so basically what, what it means is you build the application, you release the application, you run the application. Basically the uh, all these will be in, in sequential so you don't have to um, uh, release the application before it is built right so you have to first build it then you have to release it and then finally you run it the next one would be the stateless processing so every application which you deploy should be stateless so it shouldn't have any state maintained in itself so that is what stateless processing mean uh, the next one would be the port binding so for example when we uh, uh, design applications right for example let's say in java we create applications uh, deploy to Tomcat. So we used to allow Tomcat to decide which port to on which our application should be running. So those shouldn't be uh, exposed to the platform. Instead, the application should uh, drive which port the app should be running. So that is what port binding means. Concurrency. So concurrency basically means when you scale up your applications, right? So when we scale applications, so uh, when we deploy applications to cloud, the ideology is that you can easily scale applications. Basically, you create new instances of the same app. Uh, uh, concurrently so uh, we should manage our application in such a way that concurrency is uh, not compromised so that is what this means disposability so disposability means um, basically when your app shuts down or when the app comes up it the, when the app comes up it should be faster and when the app shuts down it should shut down within like 10 seconds uh, so what what it should do is let's say when the process gets a sick term error for shutting down in itself so it should clean up all the resources which it was using so that it can gracefully shut down and it doesn't maintain any state or it doesn't take any data and then burn in itself so that is what disposability mean uh, dev prod parity so this is the main part uh, where whenever you deploy an application to the dev it should be the same which you are going to deploy into prod so you should not have any uh, parity between the uh, dev and prod when we deploy the application in terms of um, the code base so the configs could be different that is why we are segregating the configs separately in the previous um, configs phase um, however the application should be the same which where we deploy in dev and prod the next one would be the logs so the logs should be streamed uh, that is what he says uh, the logs uh, as you know in a traditional application monolithic application what we do is we uh, create a log file and then we just dump those logs into the log file and so that we can log into the machine and then check it However, in the cloud-based environment, how we are going to log matters because every time you crash and burn or every time you start a new process, process the log will not be in a single host or single machine. So basically, it will be uh, in different cloud machines. So we need to stream those logs into a common place. So for example, Splunk or Elk, these are different offerings which we get from the cloud so that we can stream the logs directly from the application into these um, processes. The last one would be the admin processes. So as a part of the admin processes, uh, what we are saying that is, let's say we are running a one-time script. 
so for example uh, database migration or database maintenance uh, scripts which we run as a part of our uh, production release or something like that so we need to um, have those running separately uh, so it should not be the same process which is going to do that so that is what uh, the admin processes mean so these are the 12 factor apps uh, 12 factor design principles which um, adam begins as proposed and most of the uh, microservices patterns are following these so for example the cloud native pattern which uh, Spring Boot or Spring or Pivotal has come up with um, is also covering all these 12 factor apps in mind so that it's easy for us to de deploy our application onto cloud and manage them. That's it for this video. See you again in the next video. Thank you.